Welcome to match day three of this year's Champions League competition. My name is Kel Spellman. Welcome to We're Not Really Here and what a show we have in store for you. Joining me to get into tonight's game is Michael Brown and Sean Wright Phillips. And to my left, fresh from the FA Youth Cup win from our under-18s, Taylor Harwood Bellis. Congratulations. Welcome to We're Not Really Here. Are you still flying high? I mean, when did you get back? It must have been... Yeah, it was... Uh... Two o'clock last night. Okay, well, so literally fresh from the game. Yeah, very uh, buzzing for the lads. It was great performance and uh, a long time coming as we've uh, not won it in, I think it was 12 years. 12 years, I think so, it was. So, uh, yeah, it was a massive win and we're only ever going to win that game and losing wasn't an option last night so I was going to say of course um, for those I'm sure who know and, and all follow we've, we've kind of been knocking around that final for the, for the last few years and it's never quite gone our way. Does that become a thing within the squad or do you not think about that too much at all? For the lads that played last year in the final, yeah, definitely. We just wanted to take the feeling of losing into the game, think about we're not coming off of that feeling again this year. And um, it worked for us. Even when 1-0 down, we kind of knew we ain't, we're not losing this game. And uh, we just stuck through it, stuck through the... In the first half, it was tough with the wind and everything, but we just stuck through it and... Got the win. Got the win. I mean, um, boys, I'm not sure if you saw much of the game. We're going to be going to the highlights a little bit later on in the show and we'll talk more. But um, I guess for, for the academy and for the club and for, for these boys, it shows the wealth of talent we have coming through, Michael. Well, it does show you. You've just surprised me, actually, 12 years. I got to the semi-final a long, long time ago and it was just the something you really, really look forward to is that young players, the introduction as, as, as really getting to something serious, something that you want to do well in. Already had taste before doing it, which is a fantastic achievement. So it's it's just a great thing, isn't it? I think it's took very very seriously across all of the clubs and fantastic achievement. It just shows you how you, you've said you, you, you're not going to come away uh, losing wasn't an option, and uh, it's it's fantastic you finally got it. I mean, and, and that mindset as well, Sean. I mean, I guess that's kind of that winning mentality that we see in the first team, but quite clearly here you can see it goes all the way down to the, the, the youth system. I guess that's kind of credit to the club, would you say? Um, yeah, it's also credit to the, to the players because it's, it's not an easy challenge to, to do what they do every day and in the games and then get to that last hurdle and still perform the way they have done for most of the season. So it's, it's, it's definitely credit to the players. And I, and I watched the game, and there, as, as he said, there were some tough moments in the game, but you saw they, they, their belief in themselves never changed, and they just kept pushing. We've got some uh, clips here, actually, of the celebrations, and we can see how much it meant to the boys. But, of course, coming up uh, against a Chelsea team that has been renowned for the last decade for its uh, academy system. Taylor, does this feel maybe like a changing of the guard slightly now, the fact that you've been able to go to the final and beat Chelsea, who, of course, who have, have won it for, for, I think, the last eight years in a row or something? Yeah, definitely. It makes a massive difference that we've come in and uh, beat that Chelsea team that have won it so many times, especially against us. So, uh, yeah, it'll give us a massive boost going into it next year as well. Whoever we get in the final, we know that we've won it once now, that we can do it again. So, yeah, definitely give us massive confidence in this competition, especially in the finals that we've been beat sometimes in the finals. And we think we've got more confidence going into the next year. What, um, as I say, we'll play the goals a little bit later. I'm sure you're itching to see. But what was the one thing you think that was different for, for you and the team going into yesterday's final to get you those that all-important win? I think definitely the fact that it was kind of playing in our minds and people are talking about we've not won it in so long, and especially last year. I think that just that little bit of we kind of need to win it now. It's our time. So I think that kind of got us through all the bad moments, and especially going to the game, it was it was massive. And people say, I've played in bigger games because I've played in first team games, but for me, in my academy career, that was the biggest game in my academy career. And uh, probably the, the, and the last one I could ever play in the Youth Cup, so to win it was just massive. Absolutely magical. And actually, I think it's a credit to you, and I, I read a few interviews as well with the likes of Tommy Doyle and Delap, and of course Cole Palmer, who have all made the jump to the first team, but you could actually see to you all, it was so important to get your hands on that trophy. So massive congratulations again, Taylor, to you and all the team. Um, now we are, of course, here because we have got a fixture against Olympiacos. We can make it three wins out of three, having won our first two games in the Champions League. Um, let's take a look at what our starting 11 looks like as chosen by Prep Guardiola. We can bring you team news now. In net, we have Edison, 
Cal Walker at right back. In the middle, we have Stones and Ake. Zinchenko at left back. Gundogan in the middle with De Bruyne and Foden. And a front three, uh, same as the game against Sheffield, Sterling, Torres and Mares. Um Three names jumping out at me there, Michael, straight away, of course, in the defensive side of the pitch. Tor um, Ake, Stones and Zinchenko. I probably thought I was going to see Laporte and Diaz, but great to see Stones on the team sheet. Well, it is great to see John Stones. We know how good he is. He was really the the trusted sort of um, centre-back at one point for Pep Guardiola, of how mentioned there. But we always talk about Edison and what he brings to Manchester City. I feel a fit John Stones when he's performing well, when he's getting the ball from the back. He's cultured at times that he's got that confidence and he just needs a real run of games. And it's been a little bit disappointing from John. He'd be delighted to be back in the team and trying to push. And again, Nathan Ake as well coming back in from that injury. So it's a good sign, a bit more strength and depth for Manchester City. Speaking of those defensive players, Taylor, I mean, there is a wealth of experienced defensive talent. And I guess for someone like you, of course, who is kind of maybe just at the start of joining the first team, um, how, how kind of informative are they on kind of tips and advice and speaking to you as a, as a young player? Well, ever since the pre-season in China, when I played my first game with Laporte, all through the game he was talking to me, helping me out with um, where to be, where to pass it, even the passes that I was playing maybe on his wrong foot, it'd be like, come on, need to be, the passes need to be crisp and everything. So, And in training, yeah, everyone, even Nico, who obviously left in the summer, was all, they were all really helpful with me and uh, they've improved my game massively. So great. I mean, Sean as well, I mean, you're, you've been a young player, and Michael, yourself. Actually, we've got three academy graduates as our guests. All three of you came through our U system. How important um, are them older players when you're kind of in this transformative time, you know, of kind of going from that 17 and making the big jump up to the first team? I think sometimes they won't realise how important they are to a, a youth player coming across and stepping into their world in, in a, per se, because it's a matter of that player or myself or him or him feeling comfortable and I think when I came across I had people like Brownie, Whitley, Sean Goa, Bishop and like it was like it's like I'd always been there basically they just I settled in so quickly that it was almost like I'd been playing with them for the last year and not the reserve and the academy team and I think that helps straight away because once you're relaxed and comfortable then you can just enjoy your football naturally. And I, I guess, Michael, as well, I mean, you were one of them older players. Do you kind of realise there comes that point where you go, it's now that time that I lead by example and kind of try pass on the knowledge that I've acquired through my years of playing? I think, like, like Sean said, sort of the mid-20s to, to later 20s, you, you don't realise what you're actually and how you're affecting the younger players coming through. When you get to that age 30, you then realise. So you're even more demanding from the players and... I've met a few players from Leeds United now and they said you were really harsh on us when you were a young player, but it, they felt like it improved them because you set the standards. And I think they'll be in there now where they're in training when they join in, the second you let your guard down, they're on you. But all they're doing, as long as it's, it's in the correct manner, and I'm sure obviously most of the players here do that, they're going to help you get better. And it's a good sign that you say straight away they're trying to help you and take you on board. They want to earn your trust. Would you say that's the case as well, Terry? Is that across the team that you kind of get in that, not just from Laporte, but from the older, experienced players? Yeah, definitely. We weren't, m me and the lads weren't so much in the changing room at the start, but um, you kind of felt comfortable going in. They'd welcome you in really well and talk to you, even just saying hello. Like, it means a lot for a young lad to come up and you get Kevin De Bruyne saying hello to you. Yeah. It's massive. So, um, yeah, the prop proper nice guys and they help us out so much. And uh, now that we've been with them for the long quite a bit of time, like really feel comfortable with them and uh, yeah, they've made me grow as a player. Did, and it, did it take a while when you first went in there? Do you know when you're walking past them and you're, you, you, you're wondering because you've watched them for so long, did you, did, you, did you have the confidence to take it straight on and sort of, morning, how you doing? Or, or you're a bit the other way? Because I think it's important, isn't it, that you get more respect straight away if you are actually more and the, the feel like your confidence about, yeah. Yeah, in the right manner. Yeah. Yeah, at first it was nerve-wracking even going up to even the manager and saying hello, but now, yeah, it's completely normal. Like, you go in, shake hands around the changing room, and, uh, yeah, they're like, they feel kind of like your teammates now, but at first, yeah, it was nerve-wracking, like, going saying hello and stuff. 
It's funny. I mean, I, I have to say it's Taylor, and because I mean, I'm I'm a fan of of the club, of all the players. I'm a fan of yourself because I've watched you play. But what's a beautiful thing about you, Taylor, is I know that you're a, a diehard blue as well. And genuinely, one of my favourite things I've seen on the internet is seeing you in the city end as a fan, kind of giving it the big one as a as a fan. You know, supporting the players that you now play with, living out that dream. How can you put it? Really, put it into words, like how it feels. Not really, no. It's difficult. <laughs> it's difficult. I don't. There's not. Much, I don't know. You can't describe it. Nah. The only thing is, like, just watching them on telly, and then you just never would have thought you'd be sat in the changing room with them. It's yeah. It's it is mad. And and kind of a question for you all, having gone through it. I mean, there we can see clips of uh, of you now. I think is that. Uh is that Old Trafford? I think it is, yeah. Um, pure class. Um, but for, for you all, and Taylor, I'll begin with you, that moment you kind of gone where you maybe had the first year of the players putting an arm around you and saying hello, are you starting now to feel that actually you're a, you're a real kind of solid member of that, that first team and more comfortable now playing there? Yeah, definitely in training, even in the possessions or whatever we're doing, playing a mini game, I feel like I can command my team on the on the pitch and talk and... Stuff like that. At first, you kind of go in and be a bit quiet. Even I didn't realise that first team is when you go up, they want you to go and nail someone. Straight. Like, yeah, they like, like, that's what they want. But you, like, you would have thought, like, they, they, they would have thought that you, if you go and nail someone, they'd be like, oh, come on, what are you doing? But they like, they like that. They want you to come in and command and be confident. It shows that you're not, you're not. Like going to roll Intimidating, over. Yeah, I guess, as well. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Obviously, not over. It's good confident. until you catch one of them, isn't yeah. it? And you catch yeah. one of them wrong yeah. straight away. It's towards the weekend. Yeah. The manager's like, oh, yeah, or is that right, right. Brandy, how many times did you catch me? Never. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what, though? I wanted to ask because um, we've, we've had Paul Dick off on the show. I mean, he spoke about how when you came up, Shawnee, that you took no prisoners with kind of trying to embarrass players in a way with the way you'd go past them with such ease. So did you make a conscious choice to be like, do you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show them what I'm about. I'm going to put it through Brownie's legs, which I would never do. I don't think way. that's ever happened to me. <laughs> 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 um, no, it wasn't. For me, it's not. It was never about embarrassment. It was I go there and I either show them what I can do or I go there and they send me straight back. Yeah. So I went there to stay there, basically. And after the first week, then I started to get, like, a lot of kicks. <laughs> Him, Dunny, Jeff Whitley, <laughs> and Andy Morrison. <laughs> oh, wow, they are full so, of games. It comes with the game. It ba they basically telling me, if I don't move the ball quicker and I give them a chance, they're going to go for it. Yeah. Okay. So I have to play football. It's a team game. I either move the ball around or take what's coming. Is that learning the hard way, I guess, then, as yeah, well? Yeah, of course. Right? Yeah. I grew up in where I grew up. It was exactly the same, and I didn't expect nothing different. Your, your statement that you said is, when you went over there, you didn't want to go back. So it's about making sure you set that tempo. Do something, be around that they notice you. Where well, you see some of the, the younger players go across, and you've thought of it, what did he do today? Yeah. How did he affect the session? So whether it's you know taking the ball, being brave all the time, whether it's scoring a goal, whether it's defending well, a tackle, you've got to be noticed and you've got to try and have that confidence. It's so difficult and can only imagine going with these guys who are unbelievable players, but um, you have to believe in yourself. You have to go for it because that's your chance. I was just going to say as well, because of, I mean, the, the level of squad that Taylor, that you're going up to playing with as well, I mean, it's kind of some of the world's best players. So um, do you ever think about that, Taylor, or is it more just you have that confidence Brownie's talking about in that confidence in my ability, confidence that I should be here and I'll go and play my game? Or is there an earworm at the back of your head? I've always, I believe in myself. So going up, I was always, the, I think it was the first session I had, it was 11 v 11 game and I didn't actually start the game. Under 23s v the first team. And I came on, and it was ter the game was terrible. The first team were just battering us. And I came on and thought, I've got nothing to lose here. So I just came in, won my headers, won my tackles, shouted. And if you shout, then you're going to get noticed. Yeah. And then after that, I kind of like thought, you know what, I can, I can actually do this. I can play against the best players in the world and kind of hold my own. So when I went over then, and you're training with them, and then you've got them on your team, it helps as well. So like in the, it's the best thing, getting tested. And uh, I just take it in my stride, really. And just, yeah, I do have the confidence to hold my own, though. Fantastic. Rightly so, you should as well. Some great performances from you, Taylor. Um, OK, well, let's hear from the man who is the brains behind our first 11 tonight. And, of course, we'll be running all those training sessions that Taylor is talking about. This is what Pep Guardiola had to say uh, ahead of tonight's game against Olympiacos. Pepe, 
Welcome. Uh, good to see you, first of all. Um, in terms of defence, Aki and Stone start together for the first time since the first game of the season. You've made three changes to a side that had two clean sheets in the last couple of games. Why have you decided to make such wholesale changes? We need everyone. There is a lot of games. We need everyone in this season in both. And are you doing this, as you say, just to keep fresh legs or do you also have Liverpool in mind at the weekend? No, 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 no. It's, uh, we played just three days ago, so no much time to recovery. And uh, I need everyone fit when we will need it. So there are an incredible lot of games and, and uh, we decide it's the best 11 to start today. And speaking of fit players, Jesus starts on the bench for the first time today, but Ferran Torres has been doing so well in that centre-forward position, but how much of a boost is it to have that option to bring on another centre-forward? No, it's good to have this option, so we, we took over not to play in this position, but with the problems that we had, he adapted really well. And at the same time, Gabriel is not to play 90 minutes, so maybe during the game he can play a few, we will see. But uh, yeah, trust with the people as always. Uh, um, in the start 11. It's such a good opportunity to put yourself in a really good position in the in the group but Olympiacos are a very tough opposition they're very well organized they sit very deep how do you approach this game with them is it about patience? It's a lot no it's a, it's a lot of games still to play uh, still four so of course we know how important it is this the result today but of course in Champions League uh, we see so uh, have to be patient in the same time give rhythm and uh, you know find the right moment to win the game thank you very much you're Pep. very Good welcome Ciao. 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 that was Pep Guardiola speaking ahead of tonight's game in the Champions League of course against Olympiacos um, Michael Brown a, a another tough team as we know there's no easy team in the Champions League what do City need to do right uh, against a team that I think has only lost one game out of their previous eight which was to Porto in their league they're undefeated Yes, they are, but this is the Champions League. It's a whole new level. Olympiacos on the road in the Champions League find it very difficult. I don't know if they've won in eight. Similar team, or if not the same team that they played against Porto. So they obviously feel like that can work. And there's something different for Manchester City on this occasion. Will it be a back four? Everybody at the moment has been playing that back five against Manchester City, feeling like they can stop the threat. Wide areas, getting a good block in. Um, so hopefully there's space there for Manchester City to go and progress, to go and get on the ball. And always the talk about Kevin De Bruyne having that space, having that ability to, to get forward and, and create opportunities. I mean, if we beat Olympiacos, Sean, that's going to be three wins out of three in the Champions League, uh, which kind of uh, more or less sets the great precedent of winning and hopefully qualifying. Um, will the players be thinking about that or is it more just about taking on the 11 players that come out against them? Um, for me, as, as I say all the time, I think the way Pep has a team set up, they, they don't think about after this game. They think about the game, what's happening now. And I think they're going into the game with all the positives and confidence off the back of the last few games. And they will go there to win. And I think with the front three stretching them in behind and sometimes popping off short to give space to Kevin De Bruyne to do his, run, his third man runs, I, th I think it will just be a bit too much for him. Fingers crossed that is the case. And don't forget, we'll have predictions from all the boys coming up a little bit later. Um, Taylor, there was an interview. Um, I spoke about this a couple of weeks ago on the show. It was with Cheeky talking about how maybe trying a different approach to the Champions League. We're not putting too much pressure on. We have to win that. It does feel like a very mature uh, team and performances since the start of the campaign. Would you say, kind of having watched the boys and been a part of it, that they are approaching it with a bit of a different mentality this time around? Yeah, I think... They go into the game with freedom, knowing that they can, when they turn up, they can beat anyone on the pitch. But the main thing is winning your home games, really. You have to win your home games, and it sets you up perfectly for that qualification. And you can go away, play with freedom, you win. And then it's, it's brilliant going in. Beating Marseille was definitely a massive result, and then going into this game. So, yeah, I think... There is a mature way of them going into the games, just with confidence and freedom, really. To go and do the game that yeah. we've seen them play. Um, speaking of that, of course, we had the, the win against Marseille. We, of course, also had the win against Porto. Uh, we'll begin there. It was 3-1, of course, Porto scoring first. Um, but, again, it was mature. They came back, Michael, and, and put three goals in the back of the net. Well, they did. I think it was, a, it was a start nobody expected. And and at that point, it was how Manchester City could react and how they tried to to do things correct and it was a great finish wasn't it that give and go and the substitutes came on I think it was Torres and Foden and yes, at was, that yeah. point it opened it up I thought it stretched it was a good chance and talked about who could have changed on the bench I thought those two were the, the perfect combination down that left hand side with, you know the energy that they bring and, and I thought it was probably the difference that's seen the game off. 
I mean, um, I wanted to ask you, Sean, about Torres, um, because that's in, in two Champions League games. He's had two goals. Tonight, it could be three goals in three games. How impressed have you been with Torres over these last few games, especially playing in that striker role where we've been without Aguero and Jesus? Um, for a winger, I think he shows like a unique calmness in and around the goal. Um, as, as Michael said, with that finish then, as he's come inside, he's still taking his time and there's people shutting him down and he's had the composure to put it in the corner. Whereas I feel like some wingers snatch at it a little bit more or rush or panic where he seems to have the, the striker mentality to take his time, breathe, and then take the shot. But um, for me, I still think there's a lot to see from him. I don't think he's fully settled yet. And of course, he's playing out of position at the minute. But I think he, he has everything to be the player that everybody wants him to be, I think. He's been given that confidence, hasn't he, Sean, to go to the top of the pitch. Everybody's talking about how he's, he's brought a, a breath of fresh air at the top. His finishing will be something he'll want to try and get a little bit better. Some of his runs against Sheffield United, especially the one across the front post. Yeah, he just one, didn't, get, didn't catch it correct. But it's great. I, I, what, I, what I enjoy watching, and I don't know if Taylor will tell you the same, Manchester City at times go will drop in to get the ball all of the time and you can play in front. So that back five can sit in and I think that's where it's limited opportunities. But you see the difference once we go a little bit high, a little bit wider with Torres on the shoulder. Now as a defender, would you rather than being dropping in and you can stay and hold your slot? You don't want Torres pulling on your shoulder there, do you, to, to create that space? No, I've noticed that in the games that he's always in and around the, the um, centre-backs and defenders on the last shoulder and uh, especially when the ball goes out wide he's always I've watched him sp specifically against Marseille and he's always making that near post run in the box where you see balls flash across the box and no one's there to finish it but it looks like he's got a really and you see it in training he's got an attitude to go and get yourself in the box and score a goal. I wanted to, because I've, I've, I've asked uh, Jolene about this as well, because we've seen it a couple of times, and it's sometimes where we have come undone. Jamie Vardy, I think, is a great example in the Premier League who does it so well. As a defender, how then do you best try and defend against a player that's trying to play in behind you? Or is it constantly about positioning yourself so they're in front of you? Or do you have to kind of maybe do something a bit differently? It's probably the hardest thing to defend against when a striker's got good movement as well of, as wanting to go in behind. But it's a case of just being confident, holding your line, not dropping too deep to give them too much space. But it is difficult. You can't really say you need to do this, you need to. Like, it just all depends on where the striker's trying to go. And it is tough, to be fair, when you come against a striker that wants to run in behind. I don't like it. <laughs> I don't think you should have said that on it. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, no, do you know what as well? Yeah. Yeah, it's funny that is literally verbatim. Richard Dunn and Jolene Lescott yeah, both all say, I don't I like it. Same, yeah. No one likes it. No, it I put myself to defend against it, but I'd rather a striker be further away from me. Do you know what I mean? So, but um, well, you, you see more and more strikers running behind these days. Even last night, the striker wants to run in behind you all the time. Yeah. But if they want to play long balls, then I'm happy playing long happy balls. Happy playing long balls. Yeah. That's what we like to hear as well. Um, OK, well, we have had a trophy-laden 48 hours here at Manchester City. If you don't know, I don't know where you've been. Um, we, of course, spoke about the start of the show, a big win in the FA Youth Cup for, Manche Cup, sorry, for Manchester City. But before that, on Sunday, the women were taking on Everton in the FA Cup final at Wembley. And that trophy there means only one thing, that they did manage to beat them 3-1 after extra time. It was an incredible performance, and I was able to speak to Alex Greenwood, one of the players who starred in that game uh, before the show, to get her thoughts on the game and looking ahead to the season as well. Alex, it is such a treat to welcome you on to We're Not Really Here. Thank you for joining us. First things first, massive congratulations. Are you still riding high from the FA Cup final win? Yeah, absolutely buzzing. Um, still just taking it all in at the moment. Um, we've had training this morning, which was which was nice. Um, good to get back on the grass and probably um, try and try and put the game to bed a little bit. Um, but we lived their memories again from Sunday. It's so interesting that because you'd think that you'd want to have maybe a week to just enjoy the celebrations, but I guess that's what comes, you know, with playing for City is that you have to get straight back to it. Is it difficult to kind of get your head back into the, the mode of, all right, we've got our next fixture now, we have to get three points? Yeah, it, was, it was on Sunday. I think, you know, we, we enjoyed the, the win on Sunday and um, we celebrated as a team, rightly so. Um, we haven't been able to do that for a while. Um, so, yeah, we, we enjoyed Sunday. But then, you know, this morning when we came in, it was right, OK, um, job, job, 
job again Wednesday and we have to focus now on the Continental Cup and the league and it's massively important we switch our attention to that and you know try and pick up some more silverware. Well, we can spend a bit of time on Sunday and we're not really here um, because it was it was a tough game against Everton, of course, went into extra time. What did you make of the game? Um, because it really felt like once we hit extra time, though, kind of City's fitness and kind of your experience as a team seemed to shine through a little bit. How did you take it? Yeah, similar to what you just said. Um, I think, you know, credit to Everton. They gave us a great game on Sunday. Um, I never felt um, I never felt really like we were we were in danger of losing the game. Uh, I felt like we were all, always in control and, you know, credit to our subs who came on. I thought they were game changers. I thought they were brilliant when they came on and that just shows the strength and depth of this uh, this team that we've got to bring, you know, two, three players under that quality, um, assist, score and um, and get the, get the job done in the end and that was that was massive. So, you know, like like I said, in o- over 90 minutes, I thought we were the better team and then going into the extra time, I mean, Everton had their chances but I never really felt like we were going to lose the game. No, I didn't either watch it in the quality uh, shone through, as it always does. Um, and speaking of those changes, of course, spearheaded by Gareth Taylor, who we know it's his first season in charge. Um, how how has he been and, and how have you made kind of playing under him, Alex? Yeah, he's different to what I've ever worked with before. Uh, he's come from the men's side, which has been really good. Um, he's really honest and, you know, gets straight to the point and tells you as it is. And I, I, I kind of like that, uh, that side of him. And, you know, he's he's been brilliant for me. He's tested me in different ways, um, you know, challenged me in, in different ways as well on and off the pitch. And, yeah, it's been it's been quite a, a refreshing start for me to come from a different country, um, to work with someone who's probably completely different to what I've worked with before. But I feel like um, a, a good side of me is coming out on the pitch. And, you know, I think there's still so much more to come for myself and the team. That's so great to hear. And and you touched upon it there. I wanted to ask you, of course, because you've you've came from abroad. Almost that's a, a dream start that hopefully then you can take with you into the the rest of the season. Are you kind of settling into to life at City? Yeah, it was so easy. Um, the first day I got here, I think you know people were asking me like, uh, "How are you settling in?" I felt like I've been here for years, and that's credit to the club. Um, I walked through the door, and you know everyone knew my name, and you know they made me feel so welcome. And, and luckily, I play with a lot of the girls in England, uh, so that helps as well. Um, but yeah, you know when you come from a different culture, a, a different squad dynamic, and you come into to a new one, it can take you a bit a bit of time to to adapt but the season was was literally two days away um, they'd already been to a final and it was literally like Let, let's go let's crack on with business and I'm kind of glad it happened like that because there was no no room for you know I'm just settling in and just trying to get games under my belt it, you know pre-season was done and it was let's go really and you really have hit the ground running. Um, and we, of course, are competing for that elusive Champions League title at Manchester City, both in the men's game and in the women's game. And we're here tonight for the group game. It is something that you've won. Is it thought about uh, a lot amongst the team with you, Alex? Or is it kind of one of them just going, we take it game by game? You know what? I, um, it's hard, hard for me to say because we haven't actually, we don't even know our fixtures in, in that competition yet. Um but for me, obviously speaking with the girls every day and stuff, it's it's definitely about silverware. Um, for me personally, it, it's about Champions League. I mean, I I can only tell you what it feels like to win the Champions League, and it's something you can just never ever describe. Um, it's the it's the it's the best thing I've I've ever achieved, and you know I, I really think this this club deserves to go further than what it has done in the past. Um, and I think with the players that we've got, there's there's no reason why we can't confidently speak like that and say that we want to go further and there's some listen uh, some fantastic teams in this competition you Leon's Wolfsburgs and and so on but we're in that category and um, we need to believe that and, and I think with winning trophies like we done, did on Sunday it only installs um, confidence and we take that into all our games including Champions League oh, Fantastic Alex uh, final word then of course you've mentioned there we don't quite know the group yet but who are the contenders that we should be keeping an eye out for um, for your money Alex <laughs> start from the top and work your way down it's probably you know the, the champions Leon it. They're, they're an unbelievable team obviously playing with them last season I, I know their mentality I know how they were um, but I also know their weaknesses now as well um, which helps and then you've got your Wolfsburgs uh, Bayerns and Barcelona Atletico it's them teams how exciting is it talking about them teams and we're amongst them Chelsea uh, um, as well so yeah, fantastic competition to be a part of and I, I really can't wait for it to get started, to be honest. 
neither can we. And we'll be following you every step of the way, Alex, um, and sending you all the good luck and positive vibrations, of course, for the Champions League and the games to come. And once again, from us all at We're Not Really Here in City, congratulations on winning the FA Cup. An incredible achievement. And uh, the trophy looks great here on the show as well. It's the first trophy I've seen like this in person, and it doesn't disappoint. <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> Thanks for Alex. having me. Appreciate it. Thank you. Gareth, many congratulations. Your first trophy as Manchester City women's boss. How does that feel? It was amazing. I don't think it's really sunk in yet. There was, you know, I've gone right through the emotions today, and I'm sure the players have as well. Um, you know, we we looked like we were really in control of the game. I was pleased how we played in in the first half. I thought it was going to come in at half time nil nil, but we managed to get a really good goal from Sam. Um, we looked threatening at times. We just needed to tidy up on our final action, uh, and then. We had obviously the, the kick in the teeth in the second half with uh, conceding a goal. Everton are a threat, obviously, from set plays, and uh, it's something that we'd be mindful of. But then the, the momentum switches a little bit, and then you're looking at your players then to, to see the character and see the people who are going to stand up and be counted. And they did that, and they've, they've won it in the most difficult fashion because you've seen many games, especially in the Cup, that go the way of you know, where the ascendancy is with the other team. So I'm, I'm really pl uh, proud of the players. Uh, the way they handled the emotions of the game today. And that was what we said. That is Gary Taylor speaking at full time in the women's win in the FA Cup 3-1 against Everton after extra time. Massive congratulations to all the team. Of course, Gareth, uh, a coach that you'll know really well because he left position of coaching you boys and moved over to the women's team. You must be buzzing for him. Yeah, it's massive to win his first trophy. Um, I didn't know much about him going to the women's when he was my manager here, so... It's quite a shock when I saw it, but yeah, I'm buzzing for him. I'm glad he's doing well, and uh, he's a great coach, so I'm sure he'll win lots more trophies. Great coach, great player as well that um, I'm sure um, you guys know so well. Um, but of course, he passed the baton on um, when it came to our youth team, and here are the goals from last night. 3-2 uh, against Chelsea. Um, Taylor, what was just your overall uh, impression uh, of the game of the 90 minutes for, for, from where you were playing? Well, it was tough in the first half where with the wind and everything playing out from the back, we struggled, but it was just a case of getting through it and uh, obviously getting that equaliser with uh, Makati, who's performed really well for us. And um, yeah, just ho really holding on to the, um, the game, knowing that not losing mentality, uh, Liam holding it up for us at the front, it was just massive and... Uh, to win the game, it was just huge. It was a great cutback. This, I felt, um, was really against the run of play come the second half. Because in that second half, I mean, if you don't mind me saying, you boys were really dominating some beautiful football. And this kind of felt a little bit unfortunate. Was it hard to kind of quickly get your head back into the game or was that quite easy? Uh, especially with it hitting me in the mush there. <laughs> going in, going what do you in. do about that? It was a great finish, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> no. Did Gareth teach you that? <laughs> we'll get on to Gareth in a minute. No wonder he's moved on. <laughs> I mean, what do you do though? Because I I know what my head's like, right? I mean, if that had been me, my I would have my head would have fallen off. I'd have no, been it like, would have gone over if it had been you. Know, <laughs> most probably. <laughs> um, but you know, was there that little bit of frustration, or do you just think, right, I'm going to put this right in the next challenge? Well, there's not much I could do about it. If I let that get to my head, then it's silly, really, because it's not like I've put it in my own net on purpose or miss kicked or anything. It's just hit me and gone in. So, no, that don't really get to my head. Um, I, I just moved on from there and just kind of get on with the Play game the and game. make sure we get that winning goal. And we did actually get a... Uh, the, it kind of was karma, really, because the deflection yeah. then at the other end made it into Cole Palmer. I mean, Sean, fantastic win from the boys and can't be underestimated doing it against uh, the, the Chelsea team that they were up against. No, it's a brilliant win. Like we've said um, a bit before in the show, like Chelsea have been dominating this, this tournament for um, a while now and... Obviously, for City to come and meet them in the final and play the way they did, obviously coming from behind as well. And even the setbacks they had within the game, they still managed to push through them. Just shows what a great team they are and how resilient they're going to be for people to try and beat. Incredible achievement for us. 2008 was the last time we won the FA Youth Cup. Um, have you guys got any memories of playing in the FA Youth Cup, Michael? Me personally, I remember it was my first experience for Manchester City growing up and we got to the semi-final. And we went to White Hart Lane and Oof. we got a lesson. Did you? Five nil. <laughs> oh, wow. Five nil. It just shows you, you feel like you've made it. You feel like you've got close. And they had some senior players who went on and played you know, lots of Premier League games. And when you have a combined and you have a couple of them, you realise that they're likely going to be the winners. And it showed last night, finally, with Manchester City's turnout of players. 
uh, and that, that they were going to go on and have every chance of winning it. But it's a, it's a great tournament. And and what about um, you, Sean, as well? Any other memories for, from the um, Yeah, Cup? I think it was the, the semi-finals as well against Blackburn at Ewood Park. Um, and we lost three two just before extra time. Oh! But like Brandy said, like you, you can just tell. Was yours two legged? No, it was one. Ours was two yeah, legs. Yeah, so was it one. really? Yeah, amazing. Yeah, it was one. Ours was one, but it was the game was pretty much even, and that one lapse of con concentration, and they go and score a goal, and I think that's what differed ye in yesterday's game. You could see how tuned they tuned in they were for the full ninety minutes of the game, and even when they went one nil, three three two up, and. Chelsea go down the other end and put a ball in the box. Even though he got a header on it, all the defence was in the right places to, to make that chance harder for him. And um, a final word, because I wanted to mention this before. Uh, obviously, being coached by Gareth Taylor, played with Gareth Taylor. Can you give Taylor any little, uh, <laughs> any little bits of juice that he can bring back to the boys just in case he ever needs it? Any, uh... Well, we, we were just discussing <laughs> Taylor that. Ask, but we, were just, we were just discussing, weren't we, whether Gareth would go on to be a manager, what type of coach he would be. I think what everybody needs to understand is he spent years and years and years on this training ground all around us, getting those minutes in, getting as much sort of knowledge as he could, but then he felt he was ready to go on to be a manager. And he's even using words now like the actions, the last action. He never <laughs> used words like that. Never, Gary. <laughs> like the last time we got in the box or something like that, wasn't he? Can you always see, because players talk about that, you know, when they play with players and go, you could kind of see that he was going to go into management or coaching. Was that the case then with, with Gareth as well? Because you always see that path kind of shaping up for him a little bit. Gareth was a, a, a very clever lad. You could see he was a sensible guy and he, and, and he, he wanted to go and further his career and he's, he's done... Unbelievable regarded um, the amount of hours he's done. I've seen him very early when he was coming through and progressing and he deserves all the success he gets. Uh, one man uh, who maybe should have been on the team uh, sheet yesterday, but of course wasn't because he's with the team tonight, on the bench, James Trafford. Um, must be so great to, to see your friend kind of being called up, of course, and, and being on the bench in the Champions League game. Yeah, definitely. Uh, he'll be buzzing with it, Traff, yeah. Um, he's quite a quiet lad, so he won't say too much about it. Um, but yeah, he's a top keeper and uh, he works hard in training every day. Proper humble guy and uh, yeah, I'm buzzing for him. I wanted to ask as well, um, because we talk about, you know, how we're, it's great when we see our academy products, you know, kind of on the first team in the Premier League. But you've talked about it, Sean, as well. Travelling uh, on a European night, there's something slightly different. Do you kind of get a different experience when you travel with a Champions League squad rather than a no normal match day squad, Taylor? Yeah, definitely. It's true when they say Champions League's night. Is that a different feeling? Just the the plane on the way there, you know, you see the, all your wafer signs and uh, all your your wafer rules. Even when you get to the stadium and it's a different language, you know, you just get that feeling. The benches are different. Even when, say, someone goes down for a foul, all of them are up off the bench yeah. claiming for the foul. It's just and it's just so competitive. Every you never know who's going to win. You have to be at your top of your game to win a Champions League match. So. Yeah, you can tell it's that different feeling. It's nothing, there's not a greater feeling for a fan when you see the young lads on the bench in the Champions League games. Um, now, tenuous link, from one keeper to another, you're probably thinking, who? Kyle Walker, because I think we all remember that infamous night when he had to pull on the goalkeeping shirt, kept a clean sheet as well. Um, a lot of talk around Kyle this, this last week or so, and rightly so, because, Michael, he does sometimes feel, I think, like the unsung hero and doesn't get enough credit for, for me having consistently performed at a top level in our right-back position. We won't be without him now. Well, it's for, for him to get the goal as well. I think that's sort of a big, bit of recognition. Go back to his old club, not that like he wants to score against his old club, but it was such a nice day for him to go back, get a goal, and you don't always get those rewards. So it was a special day for him. You've seen what he's been bringing to the football club, not just on the pitch, off the pitch. He contributes a lot. I think he's probably the life and soul around Manchester City's first team. And, and I know he's enjoying his football. I've spoke to him. He's enjoying every bit of it, and he's in real good shape. And I think uh, when he's got the manager's trust, he's gone in at centre-back, he's, he's happy to play right of a three, he's back in the England squad. And I was sat actually, um, I was sat doing the game of the weekend, uh, the Sheffield United mm -hmm. game, and it was Rio Ferdinand I actually came out and sat with him and he said, we feel like he was the best performing defender in the Premier League, not just right back, the best defender. So I think from a really good defender in Rio, that tells you, tells you where, where he's getting that regard and getting that trust from, his, from, from people in football. And, and Pep Guardiola as well in an interview, I think a week or so ago, kind of said that he feels this is the best uh, Kyle Walker has played since uh, Pep came in. 
Would you agree with that, Sean? And what has been the most impressive part of his game for you? Um, I think for me, I would most definitely agree. I think watching him play, especially since the start of the season, he's, his concentration level seems to be at the height it needs to be. He, he's not getting caught out by smart strikers or attackers. He he's always seems to be a step ahead of them, which for me last season would sometimes catch him out. And, and I think this year, especially after the England game where he played centre-back for England, s since then I'm coming back to playing centre of a three, well, right of a three, sorry. Like he, he, like he, he always used to get accused of positioning, but his focus is so right right now. And you can tell he's enjoying his football. And it's nice to see him as well, still learning how to play different positions and still playing at the same level. And, and Brownie, you touched upon it, and I think he's spoken about with that. He, he really has kind of become one of the leaders in the dressing room. What is he like to, to play with, and, and how is he with you younger players? Do, do you not sit next to him in the dressing room? Do you? Yeah, yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah, how, yeah. So, Brownie is a bit uh, inside gossip. <laughs> yeah. Brownie's in the know. Oh, oh, Kyle's been on the phone and said, I got this kid next to me. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, he's a top leader. You can tell when you first walk in, he's a, a brilliant leader and uh, he is the life and soul. Like uh, in the change room, him and Stonesy having a laugh or whatever. But um, And even on the pitch every day, working hard, training, he's someone that you look up to on the pitch and think, yeah, I want to be like you when, I, when I'm that age and I want to be as fit as and maybe as quick as him, but... Uh, how, how fast is he, Taylor? Yeah, he's a joke. Sean, do you fancy you trying to say, all right, here you go, when one on one. When I was 21, yeah, you're not, coming now. Out, right. not now. Sean Wright, here we go, Sean Wright Phillips. Not what now. do you think? Do you think you've had too much from Prime, Prime? What do you think? Prime, Prime Sean, Prime Carl, which is now, who's winning the one on one? I reckon the first... He's not backing himself. The, I he reckon, no, wait, you haven't let me finish. You haven't let me finish. The first 10 yards. The first 10 to 20 yeah. yards, but... After 40 to 50, I think he, his power gets even gets quicker. Him. I think he just gets quicker and quicker, where I just start flat out. Okay. Go. All right. Well, all right. Well, so I mean, so you, I'll you, just you... say I'm sharper than him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but are you taking it past him? You've been given the ball. You're, you're, in, you're in their half. Are you getting past Kyle Walker if he's playing fullback? Me and my prime, yeah, I'd say, yeah. I, I, I fancied my chances against anybody. You, you couldn't get I him. Did. I got caught out a few times playing against him. Late challenges, yellow cards. So I had to bring him down. But yeah. you think you've got him and you couldn't. He just jumps over it. Well, yeah, right. and that, the other thing as well, apparently you sent your sense of balance and like Lois and you couldn't like knock you over at I'm all. Only, I was only like five foot then, so <laughs> <laughs> you weren't that high the off the ground, ground was I? <laughs> 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 but, I mean, speaking of Carl, I think it was a man-of-match performance in the game against Sheffield. We can see some highlights from the game now. It felt for me, Michael, actually like a bit of a different City performance. You know, we're used to seeing that free-flowing, attacking, goals being scored. Um, but, unfortunately, we didn't have that many chances, but we're very solid at the back. It was slightly different, wasn't it? It was slightly different. I thought Manchester City were comfortable. Um, Sheffield United came back into it a little bit in the second half, and you felt like... First half, Manchester City could have went on, scored more goals, and um, for to, to Kyle to step forward like he did, he was getting more advanced positions, and and I don't think he's getting forward so much this this season as he was. So I think that would probably suit his game. I think that's why we're seeing a, a much more consistent sort of Kyle Walker than than possibly last season. But he needs his teammates as well to perform in and around him, having the right balance. But I actually said it was a miss hit. I was a bit cruel and I said it was a miss hit. You know, I couldn't give him it. But he's never scored two consecutive, you know, in two consecutive games. Has he not? And I don't know if it's going to happen Could tonight. it be? <laughs> <laughs> now you've said it. it, though. If you've called that, Michael, then I think you might have to go top of our um, prediction boards for something like that. Um, we can have a little look at the, the goal now from uh, Kyle. I think it's right here for you to see. Um, I mean, Sean, the work from Sterling as well was to, to die for. That is outrageous. Um... <laughs> Yeah, and that's, that's what I said when I was watching the game. Like, I think, I don't think a lot of people saw that, but where he picked the ball up from and to keep possession where he did and still find KDB. And then, of course, you know, with KDB, he's always going to find somebody in an open position. But I think Carl Walker's first touch sets it up perfectly for him to kind of cut across the ball, which takes it around the back of the two players. But Was it not a cross? Um, I nah, can't give him I it. can't, can't it. I'm, trying, it. I'm giving it to him. I, I think he's cut across it delightful. Um, the only thing I said when I watched it was the, it seemed like the keeper got a bit of a hand to it. So I thought the keeper could have possibly have done better. But It was a good goal. But and the talk, strike was you amazing. You talk about um, Raheem Sterling, the pass from Kevin De Bruyne. It was unreal. It, no one really realises what it was like. It was a joke of yeah. a pass. Yeah. 
To give an execute like that and to write onto his toe with the uh, right way. Brilliant. And another player there that I wanted to mention, because it was in the build, was Cancelo, who I just think has, has been in great form kind of since the start of the season and has given us so much on that left-hand side. I know Zinchenko starts tonight, but again, very influential in the Sheffield game, Michael. Yeah, he was, and he's found some great areas, and he seems to have got that little bit of confidence down the left-hand side, knowing, and now he's got the little late chop onto his left, and he can come inside or outside. I think he... Seems like we're really enjoying it because we, we didn't really see sort of a Cancelo because of probably Kyle Walker on that right-hand side, a, a, an option for him to play. But now on that left-back role, he, he has been taking it. I think he's been, he's been really good. I also um, really enjoyed for me as a fan watching it. Sometimes we've seen City in the 1-0 the position and you worry going, they could be kind of get that one goal and it changes everything. But it really felt we were very assured at the back and the clean sheet for the team, Taylor, I guess must have meant just as much as scoring a goal and, and winning 1-0. Yeah, definitely. If you, if you don't concede goals, you're going to win games. And uh, yeah, that'll mean massive, mean so much to the lads to get that clean sheet. They'll come off buzzing. It's always good to get a clean sheet, especially as a defender, but they say it's a full-team performance to get that clean sheet, so everyone will be buzzing with that. And just another question on the defensive side of, of the pitch. Ruben Diaz, of course, was our record signing. Uh, has he brought a different energy as well to the, the defensive um, part of the pitch, especially with all the players that we've got there already? Yeah, he's, he's come in and just kind of moulded in, and it's like he's been there for ages, really. He's a, he's a leader, you can tell, but all the, all the defenders we have are leaders, they're all someone that I look up to and want to. I want to be like. So, yeah, he's come in and and showed that he's a good leader and a good footballer as well. So yeah, it's just another one for me to look up to and take information off. Brilliant. Uh, well, unfortunately, he is on the bench tonight um, because we see a start for John Stones and Nathan Ake uh, as we take on Olympiacos tonight. We can also just bring you a little recap of the team. We've got Edison in net, Cal Walker at fullback with Stones and Ake in the middle, Zinchenko playing left back. Gundogan seems to be sitting, I think, in a three where he's joined by Kevin De Bruyne and Phil Foden. And up front, we have the same three that started against Sheffield. That would be Torres, Sterling and Mares. Um Looking at that front three, they've kind of played the, as I say, was there in Sheffield, and I think possibly the game before, maybe without Torres. Um, Sean, do you think they've been working really well together? There's been a lot of interchanging, which I think, again, City make it look easy, but it's not so easy to be constantly going from the right to the left to the middle. Um, it's not, but I think, like you said, they've been working well, and I think the guys between them highlighted some great points. I think with Ferran down the centre, because he stretches the game all the time, it, it gives options for Yamarez to come into the little pockets and Sterling likes to come in here and drive into the space. And obviously for Kevin, when he does win the ball to break in, there's options on for him as well. So I think with the way we're playing without with a false nine, I think it's working really well right now. Question, Michael. Um, we've seen we've got some clips of Sterling warming up here. We've seen Sterling play in that number nine role, uh, and we've also seen him play maybe just behind and over to the wings. Torres in that number nine role. For you, which is your preference, Sterling down the middle or Torres? But it's such a difficult one. It depends on who you're playing against. Are you playing against that bat five, the bat four? Do you want to have patient build up? Do you want to try and stretch the teams? I mean, predominantly we've seen a Raheem Sterling switch from from the right hand side to the left hand side as. Pep wants him to drive inside and we've seen him curl shots into the far post. I really liked him the other week on the right-hand side. I hadn't seen him there for, for a couple of games and I thought he was excellent. So I think Raheem Sterling's now matured. Wherever's needed from Pep Guardiola, he'll step in and, and he can contribute. He's, a, he's an unbelievable player and we all, we all love watching him play. Same for you, Sean. Is there, is there, do you have a personal preference for where you like seeing Sterling? On the pitch, first of all. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, um, I'd I, 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 I rather him down the left, to be honest with you, only because I, when, it, when he is playing the way he has been playing, he'll go but, left but Sean, or why, right. Sean, why would you like him on the left? Though? You as a right-sided player, I'm, always played on the right-hand side. What, what, because why, why he has just, that changed that? Has the but, game changed? Yeah, the, I, th I, think, I think the way the game has evolved with people coming into little pockets, it allows them to get shots off and play that blind pass back where they've just come from. I think... If he was on the right and he comes inside and that overlap comes, it's harder for him to naturally just, do you know what I mean, cut with his left. But I feel attacking-wise, I do understand what you, you are saying now, but I think attacking-wise, the way City play it is quite beneficial to them. The only thing I didn't understand is when Sane played, he never ever played on the right. He only ever played on the left. On the left, that's so true. 
Interesting. Well, maybe we can get we'll get Pep on the show and, and we'll ask him when he when he comes on. We're not really here. Are you really going to get him? I hope. Well, I'm, I'm probably not. But, you know, you got to put it out there, haven't you? Um, now I'm just, sure just have the night off and come on the show. <laughs> yeah. Um, if you could put in a word, Taylor, that would be great. Um, but I mean, I'm sure one fixture as well that is at the back of Sterling's mind is a big one that's happening at the weekend. Of course, taking on Liverpool. Um, Arguably, it's always a fixture, I think, that stands out for us fans. Is it the same for the players, given that, of course, they are Premier League champions? Yeah, the, I'm sure they'll look at it as a, just another game going into it. Maybe there'll be a bit more of the knowing that they've champions and all of that type of stuff. But I, they're going to it thinking this is another game. We're going to play how we need to play. All the tactics are there. And just go and perform, as I say, with freedom and everything. Especially like when you're playing big games, you just try and get the mindset of it's just another game and we're just going into it, win the game and do what we have to do and the results will come with it. That's what we're hoping for at the weekend. And we can actually hear some words from Jurgen Klopp, um, who had this to say ahead of the game. Oh, just no, we haven't got any words from Jurgen Klopp. I was thinking then, I got given a little little note in my ear saying we've got some words from Jurgen Klopp. We haven't, we've just got some clips, of course, they're playing in the Champions League as well. Um, I mean, a tactical masterclass between the two of them, isn't there? Jurgen Klopp taking on Pep Guardiola. Um, of course, we're hoping City does it. But what do you think is going to be key to City maybe trying to get that win over Liverpool at the weekend, Sean? Um, for me, first of all, I think as long as we play the way we have been with all the confidence and obviously we're gonna, we need to create chances to finish the, goal, to finish the chances off. But um, and for me in the game, I think this is the first time in a couple of years where City have played Liverpool and they have the injury problems to deal with. Before, it's always been City having to rectify who's going to play where and mm -hmm. further having to drop back out of position, whereas now it's something they have to think about. So I think in regards of that game, I think we're in more of a, a positive mental state at the minute because they're going to be worrying about your players like your Ferran and if Jesus starts and your Sterlings and your Mahrez's without their key players at the back. So I think it's more for them to think about right now. I mean, of course, they had that massive injury to uh, Virgil van Dijk, which, of course, you never want to see on any player. It was such a shame. Um, and then, of course, Fabinho as well. So defensively, they look a little bit, uh, let's say, weaker. I think any team would be without Virgil. So I guess for our forwards, and then if you've got De Bruyne and your Foden's and your Gundogan's passing the ball around the pitch, we fancy our chances, Michael. You do fancy your chances, but this is a Liverpool side who know the roles and responsibilities very, very well. And yes, they're missing van Dijk, but you know the threat that they bring that front three that we're looking at there on the clips is they can score goals against anybody we know that and it's about not being overconfident it's having that confidence to go and put Liverpool really on the back foot and I'm sure you know as, as Taylor said there you want to go after them you want to get that sort of Premier League medal back almost you want to really set the tone and is this a is this what people are going to be looking at we know come weekend it's going to be billed as is this a title decider already is this going to be the difference where Liverpool is struggling so I think it's a real big game for Manchester City and I feel like they can go get right after them. Quickly before predictions then, is it a title deciding game, Michael, do you think? I mean, if, we, if we've got a game in hand and if we win, we'll go within two points of them. I personally think that will give Manchester City that little bit of a, bit of a lift and, and the real momentum to go on there and confidence. So I'm going to throw it out there and say, yeah, I believe it is. Okay. Same for you, Sean. I agree with Branny. There we go. That's <laughs> a fair. Yeah, he didn't want to, you know. I'll tell he you what, we end up all friends here on the show, don't <laughs> we? <laughs> it, it's a process. Oh, it takes I, a full hour, but we get there. I'm going to get him a sweet in a minute yeah. just to say thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're just um, under five minutes uh, to kick off as Manchester City's third Champions League game against Olympiacos takes place. Um, it's an eight o'clock kickoff, so we are now arrived at the moment of the show where we get predictions. Um, Sean, I know you absolutely love this, um, so you're going to lead the way for for Taylor. I won't let, let you go first, Taylor. Sean's going to lead the way with his prediction for tonight's game. Um, three nil. I think Mares will get one, and Sterling. Mares and Sterling. Okay, and maybe so, so two nil. No, because I haven't thought about the other one. The other one can be anybody yeah, who wants to be. Okay. I just named it. I just thought you named everyone. Listen, I, blame, I blame Kyle Walker for this. Not, not your Kyle Walker, our Kyle Walker, who is just as great. But um, he started throwing in goal scorers. I don't know where it's come from, but Michael, what, what's your prediction? I can't name goal scorers. No, we don't want to. Keep, keep it simple. Well, I, I would say that you know, I, would, I would hope Manchester City score a couple of early goals and then I would expect a, a few changes ready for that game we know about on the weekend. So I'm going to say... 2-0 Manchester City. 2-0 solid. And Taylor, finally a prediction from you for tonight's game for City. I'm going to go confident with 4-0. 4-0. I'm, I'm, I'm going to side with Taylor on that one, I think. 4-0. So why are you turncoat? You switch. You no. normally stick... 
Choose I'm what listening. I choose. You, you, no, no, hang on. I always usually go for the high score, <laughs> high score results, and 4-0 sounds like the one to go. So, yeah, 4-0, maybe 4-1. Well, maybe we'll know. It's great to see everyone's got clean sheets, though. <laughs> I'm liking the positivity on our defensive side. That's it. Very solid. Um, well, we are nearly out of time here, but remember, we're going to be back at full time, and then we will also be back at half time as well to get into the game. And speaking of Liverpool, we're not really here. We'll be with you for that game as well. Um, gents, I'll see you at half time. Taylor, thank you so much for joining us. And just to say from us all here on the show, a massive congratulations, and I hope you get to celebrate. Who is the, the, who's your next opponent? It's the under 23s. Can you remember? One of the 23s, I'm not too sure. No. I think, I mean, you're more the first team now, yeah. anyway, so uh, we Let's won't have to ask him. He stepped up That's now, hasn't he? He's, <laughs> he's, he's helping <laughs> his next game as Liverpool. <laughs> yeah. oh, no. That's South, Southampton South South away, I think it is. South South Liverpool at oh, yeah. home, mate. Yeah. Liverpool My son home. said that. you got to get the coach down, right? <laughs> yeah, I yeah. Think so. Remember when we used to have to do that? The coach Coast? all the way down south. Many, many times. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, we'll see you in Southampton or we'll see you for Liverpool. Thank you again and congratulations. Teams are in the tunnel. We'll see you at half time. Come on, City.